Hey, I want to welcome y'all to my show about what my dad taught me. Now, this is a show specifically um, tailored towards young men, and especially if these young men don't have a father figure at home. But um, it's really for all young people to get wisdom that my dad taught me, plus wisdom that I learned on my own in my 35 years of life that um, you could use to make sure that your life don't have to be as rocky as my peers and I. All right, so before we start, I need you to get these seven rules of life down. Like, it's important for you to know these seven rules of life, like um, the back of your hand. My daughter has been knowing these rules since she was three years old. And every day when she gets home from school, I make her write them down before we do anything else. So if you're a parent listening, I advise you to do the same thing with your children. These rules are very important. And every lesson that my dad taught me is going to point back to one of these rules. Right. So ready. If you got if you're at home and got some place to, to write something down with, it's time to go do that. All right. So the first rule, first rule of life, respect everything. And when I say everything, I literally mean everything that is in existence. Respect the air, respect the animals, respect your belongings, respect other people's belongings, respect your space, respect other people's space. Like literally everything on this planet works together. Right. So. You may think that this animal is insignificant, but taking it out of the ecosystem could screw everything up. Same thing with bugs. Like people just want to go kill bees, but bees is how this whole world is rocking right now. And we think things are insignificant, but everything on this place, I mean, everything on this planet deserves respect. Like it's even to the point to where it say you got to pass gas, right? You in a crowded room. But there's a way for you to get out. Just take a step out, do it outside, come back inside. That way you can respect the, the airspace of everybody else where you at, all right? So it's just little things you can do to just show your respect for everything that will make everything better. So also, it's a point. Like, I don't let my kids kill bugs outside. And when I tell my students that, they they like, why? Like. Bugs are not important. But listen, I'm like, the bugs are supposed to live outside. That's their home, right? So why would I go to their home and disrespect them in their own home? Would I want somebody to come in my home and kill me? No, nah, we all going to see that as a problem, right? So if I don't want them, if I don't want anybody doing that to me, I shouldn't be doing it to them. Which moves me to the second rule of life. Treat others how you want to be treated. This is people focused respect. Now, it's important for all of us to understand that we all come from different circumstances, right? I get it. It's like we all are not blessed. Uh, well, we all are blessed, but we all are not well off. Some of us are struggling in certain areas and not. So I empathize with um, somebody who may not have a lot. Like, oh, I'm sick of watching everybody who having things, right? I'm going to go take it from them. I get that, right? But I've never known a jack boy who has got on their feet that, you know, they say, like, you know what? I deserve to get robbed. No, it still feels bad when somebody takes something you worked hard for, right? So it all, all goes back to the same thing. Is You got to learn how to respect yourself first, like the first rule of life. And understand that where you at right now is not going to last forever. Don't treat somebody poor based on the situations that you're currently in. You're not always going to be in this situation. So treat everybody with respect. Rule number three, always do your best. Listen, always do your best. I never thought that I would have to keep reiterating always do your best. It's never a situation in life to where you should half ass something. That's something that my dad taught me. He was like, if you're not trying to be the best at it, then why are you doing it? That's what he used to say to me growing up all the time. And like, it makes perfect sense to me. If you're not trying to be the best at it, then why are you doing it? You wasting your time and you wasting other people's time, disrespecting your own time, going back to the first rule of life. But listen, 
you have no idea when you're going to need this moment in the future. And I learned this through learned experiences. Um, like when the pandemic hit, I heard the news start saying a lot of verbiage that I should have learned in biology, but I didn't care about biology. I barely passed it in college. I tried really hard to barely pass, which is crazy. But I just thought that I wasn't going to need it. I'm like, man, I want to make movies. I want to be a filmmaker. Like, why, why do I need biology? Right. So mentally, I was frustrated, which you're going to get to that rule later. Mentally, I was frustrated. I was like, man, I don't need this. So uh, so I wasn't locked in and I wasn't doing my best in the class. And a decade later, I'm able to be manipulated by people because I don't have the not the knowledge that I should have got when it was presented to me the first time. All right, so always do your best. Rule number four, be responsible. Now, out of all the rules, this is the one I struggle with the most because I procrastinate. And I procrastinate, just tied to the next rule too, but normally when people procrastinate, it's, it's due to anxiety, whatever. So, <clears throat> But you have to learn how to be responsible. And I guarantee you, if you are responsible in every single moment of your life, you're going to be successful. Responsible people, I mean, res being responsible, trans being responsible directly translates to being successful. Because we all got something that we need to do in a certain area and we got to get it done. Like, so being responsible is doing what you're supposed to do when you are supposed to do it, you hear me? Doing what you're supposed to do when you are supposed to do it. Like I asked my students, I was like, we all gonna have bad days, right? When you rather have a bad day, be able to pick up the phone and call your partner. I'm like, hey partner, I've been going through it. I need to get away for a second. Can you fly out to Kenya with me? Can you fly out to Dubai with me so I can clear my head? Right. Like, wouldn't you rather be able to do something like that, be able to travel and really enjoy life and have the time and the resources to do so? Or would you want to be irresponsible and be like, all you're able to do is be like, hey, I'm stressed out, man. I'm going to go get a bottle. Come have a drink with me so we can go to sleep, wake up and do it all over again. And you never truly have a break because you're not handling your responsibilities and all these other facets of your life. So rule number four is to be responsible. Rule number five, be mentally present. Listen, this is the mental health rule. When you are unwilling to let go of the past, that is depression. When you have an apprehensive, I mean, when you are apprehensive of the future, that's anxiety. And listen, those two places, like, you don't want to be inside of that because usually depression is going to lead to anxiety because you don't want to let go of the past of whatever has happened. So now you are fearful of the future of this, something like this happening again. And you just can jump back and forth of both of them. Listen, it is important for you to always bring yourself back to the present times. Like even if you need to plan for the future, take a mental trip to the future, figure out what you need, come back to the present and implement do what you're supposed to do in the present to get to the future, right? Like even in, in a positive sense. <clears throat> I have struggled from depression before. It is debilitating. It is not good at all. Um, and my depression did lead to anxiety for the very reasons that I told you earlier. And what I like to do to bring myself back to the current moment is I do breathing exercises to where when I inhale through my nose, I try to feel every single effect on my body that that inhale did. Um, and also what I learned how to do a few years ago is grounding. So I would take my socks and shoes off, go stand in the grass with no shirt on. And I, I allow the energy from the sun to, to bake into my skin I allow the energy from the ground to come up through my feet. And then I would do the breathing exercise. That works 100% of the time. It's so shocking and beautiful how it works, but it, it works. But it's, it's important for us to always be mentally present, right? My dad used to uh, tell me 
Always be aware of your surroundings. That's another way to be mentally present. Pay attention to what's going on. When you walk into certain places, don't have your head down in your phone. Like be aware of your surroundings and be present. Don't be in your phone. Get to a safe place before you start scrolling again. All right. You don't have to do that while you walking. So rule number five, be mentally present. Rule number six is always be a student. Always be a student. This does not mean to always stay in a child's place. Because if you make it to 100 years old and you still have breath in your body, be a student at 100 years old. There's always something for us to learn. And when you cease to grow, you begin to die. Right? You, we don't want our brains to die. Our bodies may transition, but we want to have life and to live life at all times. And the only way to do that is to constantly challenge yourself to learn something new. All right, so there was this brilliant man by the name of Sir Isaac Newton. He developed the theory of gravity. Now, the whole planet took that theory as fact for many years and until the 1900s. It was this man thinking, it was like, you know what? If I travel at this speed, time will slow down. And, and if that's the case, that means gravi gravity is relative based on speed and time. There's a lot of circumstances that can dictate and change gravity. So that means that that cannot be fact anymore. And this man was Albert Einstein. He developed the theory of relativity. So the dope part about that is that it was literally hundreds of years where people just took what Sir Isaac Newton said as fact. But because Sir Isaac Newton, I mean, but because Albert Einstein is a constant student, he was open up to learn something new. And there's a lot of things here on this planet that we accept as fact. And we just stuck there. But if we continuously be students, we can keep learning new ways and different ways and have larger understandings on certain things that can change the our course of life. Right. But it's important for us to always look for ways to to learn and to continue to better ourselves. All right. So rule number seven, always. Always be a leader, always be a leader like kids nowadays be talking about being a big stepper listen if you're gonna be a big stepper then you better step for real all right in every single situation you're supposed to step this fear stops a lot of people from being a leader i understand that i've been there before all right but when something needs to be done he has to get it done my daddy used to say if it is to be it's up to me Right. There's space for everybody on this planet to be a leader. Everybody doesn't have to be a vocal leader. You can lead through actions. All right. If you in a space and it's your space and you see something dirty or is it on the floor or or you see trash on the ground, nobody has to tell you to pick it up. Nobody has to see you pick it up. Nobody has to praise you for doing it. This is your space. You have responsibility over it. Go pick it up, throw it in the trash. Right. Nobody should have to coach you in order to do what's right. Leaders always do what's right. In every single moment, I had this situation where we had field day in my school and the sixth graders were out there and we was playing football. It was this young man named Edmund that uh, I took a liking to, man. He never played football before, but he had good footwork. He was a very respectful young man. So I looked at the field and I've seen it was filthy like trash everywhere. And I was upset that we disrespected our school like that. So I told Edmund, come here. I said, help me pick up this trash. He said, yes, sir. And he started picking it up. And after like 15 seconds, I told him to turn around. All the young men that we were playing with stopped to start picking up trash like we did. All right. I, I told him, said, that's how leadership works. All right. All it's going to take is just for one person to start doing what's right then eventually other people are going to join along, right? But it also can work in a negative way. It was another young man in my school that I took a liking to, but he play a lot, right? So 
I told him a lot of times, I told him that you're a leader, man. Like your peers literally start doing what you do. And I showed him one day and I was like, you start joking around about this, right? This was you and your joke. But what did all of your peers start doing after you did it? He says, start doing the same joke. I'm like, you see how that worked? You can lead them to victory or to failure. It's your choice, right? So it's important to always be a leader. So moving forward, we're going to get into a lot of stories and, and wisdom that my dad caught, taught me and also the things that I learned on my own. And like I said, like this is tailored towards young men, young men that don't have a father figure in their life. But really, this is wisdom that everybody can learn something from. So make sure y'all subscribe and turn on the notifications so you can be here for the next video.